This is the all-new Community Connection. I'm your host, Jade Harrell, keeping you connected to our community. Well, it began as an awareness opportunity, as a run, a walk, a prostate cancer awareness walk. 100 Black Men has seen this evolve and made it grow to a community health day that encompasses every aspect and opportunity for us to have our men in order. I am joined by Executive Director Jacques Land, who is with us. Jacques, tell us about this 13th year. Absolutely. Well, first, Jay, thanks for having us on. And um, the 100 Black Men, as a staple in the community, proud to come back for its 13th year with our annual Prostate Cancer Survivors and Awareness Walk. And as a community-based organization, health and wellness is one of our four key pillars, along with mentoring, education, and economic empowerment. But as an organization, we thought it important to step out in the community and take the lead with making sure that not only men, but the entire community families were abreast and empowered with knowledge about prostate cancer. So prostate cancer is the leading cause of cancer-related disease. However, if it's detected early, it's treatable. And statistics say that one in four African-American men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer. So our role is to partner with other community based organizations to make sure that we get the word out, help educate, partner to provide free PSA screenings with Sightman Cancer Center and at the same time highlight prostate cancer survivors. So this year we're going to do another two mile walk, uh, 5K run. And it's going to kick off at 7.30 in the morning at Harris Stowe State University. And we're inviting everyone. It's on Saturday, September the 12th. And we were doing it. We're proud to do it at one of uh, the premier HBCUs, uh, historically black colleges, universities at Harris Stowe State University on campus. And so, again, the walk and the run will take place there. We'll have some uh, entertainment out with the DJ to help get that blood flowing. Uh, We're going to kick off with a fitness session from BKM Fitness and get that blood flowing, get that energy going and uh, just a fun way to stretch, warm up and get that fitness in. And then from there, we will proceed with the education workshops and the free screenings inside of uh, Harris Stowe. Yes. So we'll talk about that growth and that awareness from the first year till now on the 13th. There has been an increase and the walk has become commonplace. You know, it's a staple. We look for it. We expect it. You know, we hear it. I heard. I mean, for us, it's just like Sister Strut, but for the brothers. Um, And then we've also seen you all come out and support Sister Strut as well. Absolutely. Talk about how things have progressed and what you've been able to offer now in depth with Mm -hmm. awareness over the course of the 13 years, how things have changed? Sure. Well, things have definitely evolved. And initially, like I said, when we started out, the main focus was prostate cancer, which it still is. And we've been able to provide free screenings for all men age 35 and over to make sure that they know what their PSA levels are. But beyond that, after the first couple of years, we begin to hear people um, and understand the health disparities in our community. And people wanted to get more knowledge and insight. So that's when we expanded the platform to a full community health day. And in addition to uh, cancer, we're going to be addressing heart disease, diabetes, HIV, mental health, um, and uh, homicides as a public safety issue. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so we're going to address all of those topics uh, through the workshops that are being provided. And then we'll have uh, vendors out as well. So the walk in itself expanded to a run. And then from there, it expanded to a full out community health day. Mm -hmm. And again, we're happy to have uh, our partners involved to be able to provide those free screenings uh, to make sure that people are not only get informed and educated, but have an opportunity to take advantage of those screenings that will be offered. Walgreens will even be there providing flu shots. Sure. And we're going into flu season, and so we want to make sure that everyone's uh, prepared with the opportunity to get those flu shots as well. well. Excellent, because we needed to step into a place of knowing mm-hmm. to change those numbers of disparity. So you brought with you your co-chair. Mr. Jared Kendall is with us as well. Good day to you, Jared. Good day to you so as well. So you've had your work cut out for you. This sounds like an enormous project. It is, but it's all well worth it. John kind of just put it in my lap and said, do what you want with it. So once he said that, my eyes just opened up to a whole lot of different ideas when it comes to health disparities in our community. So like he said, we just want to just concentrate on prostate cancer. 
considering so many different things that young men are dying from in our community, we want to make sure we try to cover all that and then give them access to people to talk to about it. Absolutely. Share with us a little bit about your vision, because it sounds like you understood that, hey, yeah, we could address prostate cancer, but there are so many other factors that affect our homes, our men, our community, that we need to talk about all of those things or as many as we can. That's it, because you, if you really think about it, we could talk about a whole lot of different things. But like this year, we definitely went and decided to put in the violence aspect of it. Yeah. Considering we sit at 130-something homicides, and if you think about that, it is a health disparity for black men. Unfortunately, the black men are the biggest target with that, which comes right back into our mental health piece. Mental health, violence, they kind of go coincide together. So I have Dr. Aveta Thompson, which should be talking to us about mental health. I have Brother James Clark to talk to us about you know the violence in our community. Um, From the HIV side of it, I have um, Dr. Otha Miles, which is the only black infectious disease doctor here, as well as Sheila Grigsby will also be talking to us about how the church is affected by this. And then, of course, we have to have Dr. Bullock and Dr. Siddiqui, which will be on the prostate cancer side. So our discussions, to me, are the biggest things that we should have taught that would um, that the portion that I really want to push the hardest. Mm -hmm. The vendors are great and the walk is great, but we really need to have that one-on-one conversation about what's really going on with our health, what's going on with our mentality, and what is triggering all this violence. Certainly. Now, you're working with the Empowerment Network still? Yes, we are. And so these brothers go about this on a regular basis, and this is a way to expand this to the broader community with uh, Melvi Shahid and the, the team there. They have seen... Their numbers change, and I say their numbers of attendance, their numbers of testing, their numbers of awareness, but they still also see the numbers of brothers perish. And this is a direct response to that, to see that, you know what, this does work. Let's invite our fellas out. It took a minute to get that momentum going. How will you get the fellas that really need to be there that may not know at all out to this event? What would be your call out to them? I think it's not even about it. It's a call out. Don't get me wrong. It's definitely a call out. But the bottom line is, if we are really looking at statistical facts, we see this every single day in the past. I just look at it from my standpoint. Okay. Since it's eight months in a year, I've had six friends die due Ooh. to dialysis or think diabetes and cancers or things of that nature. Of your own, in your My circle. own friends, in my own circle. So when I look at it from that standpoint, even if from my age group, when you constantly on Facebook and you're seeing young people dying of heart disease, you know, you find out your friends are on dialysis and things of that nature. Reality is really setting in. So I think due to Facebook, through the Twitter, through all the different social medias, and then us as the 100 black men actually getting out mm-hmm. there and promoting it, it's the only one way it's going to get done. Like Sister Strut, like I always tell the brothers, we can always identify a person, a woman with cancer, mm-hmm. and we have sympathy. But when it comes to our health, we don't want to talk about prostate sure, cancer. Sure. We don't want to talk about sex education. So we've got to find a way for us to have our time to feel comfortable in our own skin to be able to talk about mm-hmm. this because it's affecting us whether we like it or not. Sure. And you just said it. You know, it's all around you. If those numbers are just within your circle, there's no denying that there's a problem. Yes. You know, you're seeing your loved ones. You're seeing your friends perish right before you. So it's not something that can be avoided and here is a chance that you can actually connect and figure out well what's going on and who's to say that you're not one of those numbers if you're talking about one in four jared what was your wake-up call personally i've been in public health for the past eight years but never was a wake-up call my mother's a retiree from the health department so i knew the importance of it but i guess now in the last five or six years when you start seeing your friends and you're hearing about all the different conditions you know people having heart attacks at age 26 and 27 I think that really kind of affected. And then, you know, we had a real pioneer that was a part of our our prostate cancer walk and committee, Isidore, which was one of the guys that's actually with the Empowerment Network. When he passed from prostate cancer, you know, it kind of put another face to that. And, you know, that just really gave me the momentum to say, you know what, I got to keep pushing for him in that aspect. Was there anything that scared you? And I say that because we talk about, well, fellas don't want to talk about it. Uh, We say that they don't want to talk about it, that they avoid the topic. So I'm thinking if you shared what maybe got to you, that it would speak to another. I think what really got to me is during the time that my mother was sick, when you know when people get sick, you kind of change your eating habits. You you start doing crazy things. And being that I am in the health field, when I went to the doctor and had my own blood work done, and you see your liver levels high, you see your cholesterol levels high, when you start seeing those levels get high and then you figure out, okay, I'm in that age group that 
unfortunately comes into hypertension, diabetes, stress, all of those it's factors. A long so list, you, isn't it? right, it's just a list of yeah. things that I fall in that category for. It's just like you know what? Mm-hmm. So that was a wake up call to me because if I can't take care of myself, right. How can I promote somebody else to take care of themselves? Sure. So what was the most empowering for you? Hmm. You know, from the prostate cancer side of it, when this, like I said, when Isidore, which uh, when I first got in the 100, he was kind of my mentor when I started this from the health and wellness side. I think that bothered me the most, um, seeing him pass, because you didn't realize he had it. I didn't realize I didn't see it when he became sick. I thought, okay, he'll be back. And then for him not to be here now, you know, it's something that's missed when I'm having my meetings because he was the guy that was always there for me. So you start looking at that, and then, like I said, when you have your friends start slowly dying at early ages from not just being sick and you didn't realize how sick they were, all of that's just becoming an eye-opening because you just, you know, you realize that, you know, it can happen to you. And then look at the violence standpoint. We fall in so many different categories. You can't go to the gas station because you don't know about that. And then mental health issues mm-hmm. because, you know, when you get stressed out, your mental's not right. So... We cover a lot of bases as black men, yes, you do. and we have the avenues to talk to, but we don't want to talk to nobody about it, and we hold it all in to the point of when we finally go to the doctor, he's basically almost giving mm-hmm. you a death certificate. Mm-hmm. So we're trying to get people out early. Sure. You know, I consider you an endangered species, a very precious endangered species, and so this is very compelling to me to be sure that we can do all we can to make sure that you have what you need. And you even mentioned mental health. People don't want to talk about mental health, but these are traumatic, trying, toxic times. And you're bombarded with this at every turn Mm -hmm. from the moment you rise to the moment you rest, if you get to rest. So I certainly understand how this could be challenging, but I'm so grateful for 100 black men to be stepping up and making sure that we face that challenge head on. Jock, share with us some of the victories and successes. So a lot of victories um, that we are proud of uh, as an organization over the past 13 years, there have been several men who realized their PSA levels were elevated. And so they've been able to follow up with their urologists or their doctors and a lot of times Dr. Uh, Bullock. He's gotten so many referrals from the organization. Yeah, I know. You so, can't get an appointment now. No, I, yeah, he's booked. <laughs> but there's been an opportunity for them to get in and address it, whether, you know, they go through a therapy or whether they go through a actual surgery, some form of treatment to address it. And we've been able to really be an intricate part of saving lives. And I think that is the biggest victory and the biggest success and mainly the reason why we do this. Um, That's the main objective for implementing this. And so we're proud of that and uh, also proud of uh, being able to expand upon the educational outreach with the health disparities in addition to just prostate cancer Mm -hmm. because these are things that we live with every day. Stress, you know, mental health, you know, dealing with uh, heart disease. And it personally affects, you know, me, my family, you know, dealing with heart disease. And, you know, both my parents died of cancer two different forms, lung cancer and colon cancer. But, you know, it's just impacted and affected my family and friends. As uh, Jared mentioned with Isidore, he was a major player, a participant with our annual prostate cancer walk and prostate cancer education and awareness. And him and Melvie, you know, together finding Empowerment Network to do it on a daily basis and being involved with them to just have one of them missing. You know, um, it just affected us. Yeah, Yeah, it was a hit for everybody. And I know that you all are still feeling some of that pain from his loss. But look how much he gave and fuels you even now. Right. Now, I consider you one of the men at the gate. <laughs> what would you say? Because you're exposed to a lot of people and different things. You've lived fully, you know, rich lives. What have you learned? First of all, to God be the glory, um, mm-hmm. to be blessed, you know, on a daily basis with um, all that he has done for me and the path that he lays out for me to lead and be a a partner in uh, working with the organization to lead this type of initiative. You know what? It's just been great and a blessing to be involved, to provide a platform to do education and outreach with health disparities. And I think that as men, we have to understand our role as leaders in the family, that we have to make sure we take care of ourselves and our health so that we can maintain our role in our position with our families and 
and with our community. And oftentimes we, you know, put ourselves on a back burner to take care of everyone else. And unfortunately, you know, if we go down, a lot of things go down with and around us. And so to all the brothers out there, I'm highly encouraging them to come out, take advantage of these free screenings and participate with this Community Health Day. And it's fun, you know, also. um, Come on, man, you're talking about PSA (laughs) tests. Let's just dispel that myth for the brothers. Right, right, right. So, Man, you're talking about PSA tests. So we have to do a little bit of education here. So so the PSA test is different from the DRE, which is the Digital Rectal Exam. So So PSA test is just a light blood test. Right, right. You just get prick. It's, you know, it's done in five seconds. What kind of prick are you talking about, brother? I'm talking about a very, very small needle. Look, you know, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Anybody can handle it. You okay, know what I mean? So okay. man up. That's you what know, I'm saying. Right, man right, up. Right. We can get this done. So yeah. it's an easy uh, process, simple blood test. And I'm also not just the brothers, um, because I know we going to man up and come out. But I also want to encourage the women to encourage the men in their lives, their husbands, their brothers, their uh, sons, their nephews, you know, to come on out because really it's also the encouragement of the sisters that get the brothers to come out and take care is. of their health. Yes, and I'm yes, going to keep yes, it real. Yes, you know, that's my wife that schedules my doctor's appointments. That's and, right. I'm you know, going to believe sure that Lita kicked you out here and said, y'all need to do something. But <laughs> you I'm know what? And you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. It's that a fun too. day, but also health yeah. education. And you get a free T-shirt if you participate oh, with the walk run. You know, everybody I see everybody in the gym with those shirts on. That's right. That's right. Well, see, that's what really speaks to this whole thing when you say community day. So even if Mm -hmm. the sisters were the ones that bring them out or that you come out with some other brothers, or if you come out, you will get that sense of connection and community that you need to even deal with all the things that you're facing, first and foremost, but that you get connected with people who care absolutely, and realize that we do care and have you out here. And by you being there and standing in solidarity for this, you also communicate that you care. So Definitely. therein lies the additional fun. So PSA, you think it's no fun. This will be the funnest awareness, overcoming opportunity that you will have in a long long time and we are most certainly wanting you all to be out the theme this year or the philosophy is improving mind body and soul and all of those concepts will be covered here jock i'm just going to have you send out the invitation for anyone who's listening to be a part of this event absolutely we are calling out everyone First and foremost, the brothers, the men, we want you to step up and take control of your health. Come out, participate with the Prostate Cancer Walk, sign up. You can register online at www.100blackmenstl.com. But not just the brothers, the families, the sisters, everybody, you know, to encourage the men to come out. But take advantage of the education information and the free screenings, uh, the educational workshops. We're looking for you to come out and participate. We're putting the charge out. We've got awards being acknowledged for the first place church that has the most participants, the fraternity, as well as the sorority that has the most participants in the team in general. So again, we're encouraging everyone to come out. It will be on Saturday, September the 12th at Harris Stowe State University, a premier HBCU. And, you know, again, uh, registration, you can get online at www.100blackmenstl.com. Now, this is 100 Black Men, and we mentioned the statistics for black men that one in four Black men may be diagnosed with prostate cancer, but please pay attention to the numbers. Everyone who's listening, one in six men, that's one in six men overall. So when we say brothers, we do mean brothers, but we mean all of the brothers, men, period, fathers, leaders of our homes and our families and our communities. We want all men to come and be a part of this initiative. So we look forward to seeing you. 100 black men of Metropolitan St. Louis stepped up for the charge, but every single one of you should step up and be a part. The 13th annual Prostate Cancer Run and Walk featuring Community Health Day, high blood pressure, heart disease, HIV, homicide, and other areas, including mental health, will all be covered there, and we'll all cover you in love. We appreciate you being here. Jacques Land, the executive director of 100 Black Men, and Jared Kendall, who is the co-chair this year and made it popping. <laughs> <laughs> this year, you know you just signed yourself up for another year, right? All right. We appreciate you, brothers. Thank you so very much. Thank you. We thank you, Jade, and iHeartRadio. 
All right, that's it for this week. If you have questions or comments or have something you'd like to include in the community calendar, you can leave a message on our message box at 314-333-8369, 314-333-8369. And for more information about our show or any of our guests, you can visit us online and listen to the podcast at Spreaker.com. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. And search Community Connection with Jade Harrell. You all be blessed, do blessed, and take care.